So talking, let's start with Israel. Um, obviously, the, the tension has now shifted to the response to this horrific terrorist attack. What are you thinking about in terms of the wider implications? Well, I think uh, what it underscores is, is that there's evil in the world. And there's a tendency to compartmentalize everything. Ukraine, mm -hmm. Middle East, Taiwan. They're all gathered, not gathered together, but they're all linked together. Mm -hmm. And the influence of one, the outcome of one, how events unfold in one have a huge impact on others. So in the Middle East, they're going to take out Hamas. And the, their taking of hostages was precisely what they wanted to do to avoid an attack. I'm sure the Israelis, one of the reasons why we haven't had the big attack yet, is they already sent, have sent teams in there mm -hmm. trying to figure out where they are what the, could be done to rescue them. So uh, that, uh, that part of the story is still unfolding. But they are going to take out Hamas. That leads to the question, what are they going to do after they occupy Gaza? Well, what they're not going to do is make the mistake they made after 2005, left it to its own device and allowed Iran to move in and put in this terrorist organization in charge. Yeah. And right now the focus should be, which is already unfolding as we speak, is to have Egypt set up special camps to take in refugees. Well, so that means one of the questions that's been dominating a lot of the headlines is what does Gaza look like without Hamas, given how much it's been embedded? It's an unusual terrorist organization. It's run hospitals, it's run schools. You know, the humanitarian crisis there that's getting a lot of attention, how does that resolve itself in a way that um, is you know what Israel intends, which is its own protection. Well, I think uh, Hamas is also, you know, what the, the, their hospitals and things like that are much like uh, gangsters in uh, cities in the U.S. giving turkeys out at Thanksgiving. Oh, we're not such bad people, but they are. They make sure civilians sure. are going to be in the way of uh, incoming missiles. It's like the mafia. They make, yes, they, they they make sure that uh, there's going to be real damage that can be photographed try to get uh, global opinion to put pressure on Israel. So in terms of uh, the f uh, embedding um, uh, Hamas, that's precisely why the Israelis are going to go in. Precisely they know pretty much who's who and take them out. And then uh, they're going to have to work with Egypt and others on how this territory is administered. People forget that Egypt uh, took uh, the Gaza Strip after the late 40s, the mm -hmm. war of original war of independence for Israel occupied until the 67 war. Uh, Israel decided after a few decades uh, they didn't want this thing and they tried to set up an independent Palestinian state and they saw what happened. The bad guys were allowed to move in. So that, uh, that's not, they're going to try to minimize the huge human costs, but also we should not mistake that this is a small, powerful, well-financed group of terrorists, evil, we saw what they did deliberately in Israel, and so they do have to be taken out. Now, what is Iran going to do? Is Iran going to try to open up another front mm -hmm. uh, with the West Bank uh, or with and Lebanon? Hezbollah. With Hezbollah. And uh, the answer there is I think the Israelis are now going to give very serious consideration to going against Iran's nuclear facilities. Which is very hard to do alone, of course. So that gets to the U.S. response. I mean, there was cert there, two weeks ago we were talking about the dawn of a, a new era of prosperity and peace in the region, you know, because of the ties that have already been created with the Abraham Accords, potential ties with Saudi Arabia. Um, how much can Israel, how much agency does it have right now to deal with Iran without jeopardizing some of those regional ties? It depends on how bad the humanitarian crisis becomes. I think every they're going out of their way to show they're doing everything they can. And having Hamas killing their own people who are trying to flee to the south, I think uh, is going to be having an impact. So in terms of uh, the Abraham Accords, they go on the sidelines for the moment. But make no mistake, behind the scenes, governments in Saudi Arabia, the Gulf states, want Hamas eradicated. Uh, they can't say it publicly, but that's what they want. They see it as a threat to them. 